All right, hello everyone. This is Nadia from John Admissions. Welcome again. Oh, and you know, uh, this is already February. Time really flies. Next time, uh, it's it just feels like we just enter 2022 and right now it's February, Spring Festival has passed. So I hope everybody's doing all right despite uh, the COVID-19 and also the bad news about COVID-19 that hits uh, some of the countries also in 2022. So I hope everyone is doing well and healthy. And yeah, today we are having United International College from the Division of Humanity and Social Sciences to share more about the updates for 2022 in the admission. So let me know if you guys can hear me okay. So you can type some, something on the chat box. You can say, hello back to me maybe, or uh, let me know where you're from because it's always uh, excited to know where students are coming from. Because, uh, you know, at events like this, even though it's online, but it's still good to know that, you know, everybody can, everybody from all over the world can actually join and also get the benefits from this event as well. So let me know if you can hear me as well. Hi, 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 hi from the UAE, hello. You're right, so hi, we have people from the UAE, from Ghana, from Nigeria. Hello, everybody. It's always exciting to see where you guys came from. I think it's morning time probably in Africa. So yeah, you just started your day, but it's uh, already like late afternoon in Beijing. So thank you so much for joining. Hello, hello from Mozambique. So thank you so much for joining. It is uh it is our pleasure to have you on board today for today's uh, info session with the UIC. So for today's info session with the UIC, uh, there are professors from the Division of Humanity and Social Sciences that will share more about the programs at uh, United International College, especially if you are looking for these programs, uh, for example, bachelors in public relation, advertising, Chinese culture, and global communication, then this is the right place for you to get more information from the UIC. And also the UIC admissions team are also here as well. So they will share the updates for 2022 intake application because application is already open for the 2022 intake and moreover there are scholarships as well so if you're excited to know more about how to apply what's the process and also about the scholarship opportunities at uic then stay tuned to get more information from them and again if you have any questions feel free to ask uh, the professors are here the admissions team are here so if you have tons of questions for the UIC well then this is the right place to ask you can drop your questions on the Q&A section so if you open it on uh, on the zoom I think below there is the Q&A section so you can just click it there and then you can uh, drop your questions there so then you can ask us anything about the admissions information or maybe about uh, any specific questions from the professors that would work as well. So if you have any questions at all, then this is the right moment because the professors and the admissions team are all here and they can help you uh, with all of your questions. Uh, yeah, I think students are very excited. Somebody is raising, uh, somebody is raising his hand already. So it means that you are excited with the event and you probably have questions. So yeah, feel free to just drop your questions straight away on the Q and A section, and then uh, later at the end of this event, uh, the professors or the admissions team from the UIC will then cover all of your questions uh, for today. So yeah, we hope that you are excited for today's event and we hope you get lots of information for your application and we hope you access a successful admissions for the 2022. So today, uh, our event will be for the specifically for the uh, Division of Humanity and Social Sciences at the UIC and then uh, it is mainly for bachelors in publications, advertising, Chinese culture, and global communication at UIC. But don't worry, because UIC have lots of lots of bachelors program available in English for international students. So if you are interested in any other programs, UIC still have that as well. For example, uh, next month in March. Uh, we will have another info session in Bachelors in Culture and Activities, Media and Cinema at the UIC. And previously, we have had some events with the UIC before, for example, uh, for the Accounting and Economics program. 
And there are still lots, lots of other programs offered at the UIC, so feel free to check it out and hear the presentation. And today, there are two professors uh, from the UIC that are joining us. So we welcome, we welcome Dr. I'm sorry for the pronunciation because I'm not native Chinese. I hope I said it correctly. So we welcome Dr. Su Jiaying, and also we welcome Dr. Uh, Tuki or Dr. Jackson, uh, sorry, we welcome Professor Chiki or Professor Jackson. So yeah, thank you so much, everybody. We hope that uh, this information is fruitful for you and I will give the floor to the UIC admissions team. Okay, thank you, Nadia. Hello, everyone. My name is Jessica Xiao from International Development Office. I'm the Senior Officer of International Development Office at UIC. And today's presentation um, uh, of three parts. Let me share my uh, screen. Okay, the first part will be who we are. The second part will be what to study and also student experience at UIC. And the third part will be scholarship and how to apply to study at UIC. Uh, first, I will play a video. From the video, you will get a general idea about um, what US will be look like. Have you ever thought of your ideal university? Have you dreamt of being a liberal arts college student? It is a journey where you explore your intelligence, skills, and potential to become inspired, to think outside the box, as well as to express yourself. Face the challenge and work hard to achieve your goals. It is also a haven to carry out interdisciplinary studies in arts and sciences, to appreciate both Chinese and Western cultures, to develop, to innovate, and to excel. It is a forest that has many paths. It is a round table where different minds meet. It is inspirational, diverse, and integrated. In knowledge and in deeds, unto the whole person. This is your university life, your unique journey. At USC, create your own university life. Start here, go anywhere. Okay, UIC is the first higher education institution jointly founded by a mainland university and a Hong Kong university, Beijing Normal University and Hong Kong Baptist University. UIC was founded in 2005. UIC is located in the beautiful coastal city of Zhuhai in the Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area. Zhuhai was one of the first places where modern Chinese met Western culture. USC showed us the historical mission of advancing the internationalization of Chinese higher education and taking the lead in implementing a liberal arts, liberal arts education in China. So you can see the, our phase two campus and phase one campus. Phase two campus is now under construction. So phase two campus will focus on science and technology and graduate education in the future. And the phase one campus on the right hand side so it's our current campus, which you have seen in the video promotion video just now. Um, it will focus on 
uh, humanity and social sciences in the future. Our mission and strategic positioning is to establish a liberal arts college rooted in excellence in undergraduate education and graduate programs that highlight our strengths. US is located in the Greater Bay Area. Graduates are expected to gain more opportunities to live and work in this area. So we are also close to Hong Kong, Macau, Shenzhen, Guangzhou. So you can get a lot of opportunities to work here. And non-local graduates, they, are, they will gain more opportunities to live and work in Hong Kong once the new initiatives are implemented. One of the features of USC is in international education. So we have faculty members come from more than 30 countries and regions. And uh, one third of our faculty members are from overseas and one third of them are from Hong Kong, Macau and Taiwan, and one third from mainland China. And the composition of our students is also very diversified. Most of our students are from mainland China and also we have students from Hong Kong, Macau, Taiwan, and also we have international students on campus. So after four years study, you will get two graduate certifications. So you'll get graduation certification of Beijing Normal University, Hong Kong Baptist University, United International College. And also you will get another bachelor degree confirmed by Hong Kong Baptist University. Currently, USC provides four divisions of five uh, education centers. So four divisions will be Division of Business and Management, Division of Science and Technology, Division of Humanities and Social Sciences, and Division of Culture and Creativity. So today we will focus on Division of Humanities and Social Sciences. The five education center will be General Education Office, so which provides a wide range of courses. Uh, ranges from world history and civilization, foreign languages, and etc. Whole person education office. So for this office, we will introduce more later. An English language center, and Chinese language and culture center, and also research center and laboratories. Here you can see um, the majors provided by Division of Business and Management. So we have accounting, applied economics, finance, management of human resources, marketing management, entrepreneurship and innovation, the business management and information systems. And here are listed the, uh, the majors provided by Division of Science and Technology. So for these two uh, divisions, if you are interested in any of the majors, you can as Nadia just mentioned, you can uh, refer to the previous uh, promotion uh, webinars recorded by Channel Admission. You can find them on Channel Admission's website. And here are the majors we provided for teaching of humanities and social sciences. So today we will focus on public relations and advertising, and also Chinese culture and global communication. And here are the majors for Division of Culture and Creativity. Okay, so USC now has signed exchange agreements and MOUs with uh, more than 62 partner institutions. And these uh, 62 partner institutions that come from US, UK, South Korea, Canada, and etc. USC students, including international students, they can exchange out or study abroad for one semester or summer during their four year study. Okay, so one of the education philosophy of USC is whole person education. So what is whole person education? Let's watch this video. Whole person education experiential learning are courses, programs, and activities where students apply knowledge and action overcome challenges, practice multiple skills, and discover their potentials. Courses include experiential development, braving the outdoors, working in teams, and building confidence, emotional intelligence, understanding oneself, empathizing with others, and coping with stress. Sports culture, shaping the body, respecting opponents, and embracing culture. Experiential arts, reviving traditions, mastering techniques, and being creative. Ontario service.
service, widening perspectives, serving others, and contributing to the community. Environmental awareness, exploring nature, thinking global, and acting local. And adversity management, facing challenges, enduring hardships, and performing under pressure. Courses are complemented by off-campus programs where students deepen their learning experience. Okay, Corpus in Education is to provide experiential learning courses, programs, and activities. Around 70% graduates will choose to study abroad after they finish study at USC. So in 2020, around 700 and 18 of our graduates were admitted to top 100 US ranked universities. In 2021, the data is still under collection. So after we have the new data, we'll share this with you later. Okay, um, I want to show some campus scenery to them. So here are some pictures of uh, campus scenery. So it's a um, bird view of the whole campus. And here is our Learning Resource Center. It's inside of our Learning Resource Center. And here are the pictures of our student dormitory. And international students will be accommodated with our Chinese buddy. Um, uh, they can, the international students can learn Chinese or Chinese culture from Chinese buddy. And in their room, they have an uh, independent bathroom. And also in our phase two campus, even they will have a kitchen in the future. Okay, here's our sports complex. Here are some pictures about Huitong Sports Park. So we share this uh, sports park with our local community. Here are some pictures of our student cafeteria. Here are some pictures of our cultural creativity and classes. Okay, now I will uh, hand over the presentation to my colleague, uh, Mr. Cody Meng. Uh, he will introduce something about scholarship and how to apply to study at USC. Let's welcome. Hey everyone, uh, this is Cody from International Development Office. And I will introduce about our uh, scholarship and uh, how to apply for UIC. So if you, are, if you are an international student, UIC provides three kinds of scholarships for you. So uh, for students who have excellent performance in academic, uh, we will provide a full entrance scholarship, uh, which was 100,000 RMB every year. And also there is a 30% entrance scholarship and also uh, uh, worth uh, 30,000 RMB every year. And also, if you, as long as you are an international student, you will get a government scholarship of uh, 10,000 RMB provided by the Guangdong Department of Education. And here are some pictures of our uh, scholarship ceremony. And in 2021, uh, to 2020 to 2021 academic year, there were 2,170 students in total were awarded scholarships in different categories. And here are some general uh, admission requirements for people, uh, for students from uh, different regions and different countries. Uh, for each region, we have uh, different requirements, uh, but uh, uh, basically, if you have a high school diploma, you can apply for UIC. And also, if, if, you, have, if you have any of these uh, certifications, you can also provide us. And also, uh, if you want to apply for UIC, here are some uh, documents you need to prepare and uh, uh, submit to us. Uh, we need your graduate certification of high school, your transcripts, and uh, you also need two recommendation letters, your personal statement, your copy of passport. And if you are a non-English speaker, you, need, you also need to uh, submit your language certificate. And uh, for TOEFL, uh, we, we need a score of 79 or above and uh, six or above for IELTS. And now application, application deadline is June the 30th every year. So uh, if you want to apply uh, for this fall, uh, you, you'd better hurry uh, uh, submit your materials and apply. 
And also, if you have any question about uh, how to apply for UIC or any question about the program, uh, the scholarships, any, any questions, you can uh, send us an email here. Here is our uh, office email. Uh, you have any questions, you can ask and send us an email and we will reply as soon as possible. And also, uh, we would like to share a video that uh, how our international students on campus uh, uh, see about their lives in UIC and in Too High. I think UIC is really cool because there's a lot of opportunities to integrate me and like myself and other exchange students along with Chinese students to get to know each other and um, explore our differences together but find common ground to integrate together. UIC is an educational center that gives students the chance to learn China and all its cultural aspects, including traditional music, traditional dances, history, and geological locations, travel, and historic places. The environment of UIC is really awesome that I really feel happy here, and our technology, all the classrooms. And the teachers are trying to qualify. I really appreciate to be here and leading my study. When I think of UIC, I just think about when I went back to the club fair, and they had so many different organizations there to for us to get interesting. And every club we spoke to was so passionate about what they did. Um, whether it was the outdoor club or the fashion model club, everyone everyone was really really dedicated to their craft. So that's a brief introduction of UIC and the application procedures. So uh, for today's uh, webinar, we will have two professors uh, here to introduce our program. So uh, let's welcome Dr. Xu to introduce our uh, PRA program. So Dr. Xu, please. Okay, hi everybody. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes, yes. very clear, yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, thank you for the opportunity. I'm uh, uh, Dr. Richard Xi. I'm the Program Director of Public Relations and Advertising uh, Program. So uh, first of all, uh, you are international students and uh, we are the Public Relations and Advertising Program. So why study with us? Actually, we do have a very good advantage because we are located in Zhuhai, Guangdong province, and we have a bridge connecting uh, the campus to Macau and Hong Kong, which means we are very close and um, internationally as well. And we are also in, located in the Guangdong province, who, uh, which have the most African uh, spenders online, the most, um, uh, the most, the kind of uh, African uh, consumers in China. So if you're interested in marketing, in public relations and advertising, and this is um, the place to be. And also, and also um, public relations and advertising program, we, um, let me share a screen here. Let me see if I can share a screen. Ah, okay. So it doesn't work in this way, it doesn't matter. Okay, we, um, we have um, 10 full-time staff who are all, uh, who have um, international, um, study experience and got their PhDs from uh, the US and mostly from the US from also from uh, uh, Canada from Malaysia and from and people coming from South uh, Korea and we are very uh, internationalized uh, team of uh, teaching staff and that makes our program um, very rich in international perspective so we are teaching students with very international theories um, the um, cutting edge theories and we combine the theories to the localized market, uh, which means that uh, the people will be uh, looking or dealing with these issues with a very international and up-to-date uh, theoretical perspective. And this is something um, I, as a program director, uh, very am very proud of. So what do you study uh, at our program? Well, in the public relations and advertising program, um, as I said, it's a part of the uh, marketing process. So um, in the first years, you will learn 
the basic principles of advertising, for example, what is advertising? Um, of course, everybody is exposed to advertising every day, but um, what exactly uh, taking place and what exactly is changing in the era of uh, digital media? And also what is public relations? Is public relations needed for every organization or is it only needed when an organization have something goes wrong? Or why do an organization need to have some kind of public relations and who are these public relations we are talking about? So we have, you can learn about these principles of public relations and advertising uh, in the first year of study. And then uh, moving on to the second year, you will learn, for example, um, public relations uh, writings. We write different formats of public relation copies. And also moving to the third year, you will learn about uh, advertising uh, writing as well. And also you learn about branding, you learn about internet in integrated marketing communication, which means that you learn uh, how to analyze a um, market and whatever it's an international market or Chinese market, and then you analyze the situation and then you come with, uh, uh, you conduct your research, um, primary research and secondary research, and then you come up with a plan and all, um, and after that you will um, execute this uh, plan with different uh, media and creative execution. So it's a international integrated marketing communication. And you also learn about that. And of course you learn uh, communication theories. You will learn about how to conduct research uh, in the field of public relations and advertising. And also you learn about media planning, you learn about event planning because public relations uh, sometimes involves uh, offline activities as well. And that is a very, uh, very basic and fundamental uh, thing to do. For example, organizing a press conference, organizing a pop-up uh, store. So these kind of things you will learn in media and event planning. And also you learn about consumer behavior, you analyze or you learn you learn about the basic concepts of consumer behavior and also how to analyze them and, and see what kind of, for example, motivations they have and how to uh, reach out to different segments of the market and different segments of the uh, consumers. And also, like, we, like I mentioned before, we have uh, the location of our campus is very good because it's located in Guangdong province and nearby there are uh, at least uh, four other universities, okay? So which means that you are very close to this um, data, okay? This consumer data, young consumer data in China. So if you're interested in the Chinese market, you, if you're interested in, in what the Chinese uh, young consumers are behaving, what are they thinking, what are they spending every day? And uh, UIC has a very uh, advantageous uh, um, location. Okay, and it's close to Shenzhen, it's close to, to Guangzhou. And so these places are really uh, the most affluent and active young Chinese consumers are located. And it's two hours by bus and one hour by, by train. So it's very, very uh, close to them. Okay, so this is sort of uh, the things that uh, you will be learning in our campus. And also we provide uh, a lot of internship opportunities. Um, right now UIC or the program of public relations and advertising is, is um, favored by a lot of uh, international 4A advertising agencies. And they chose PRA as the only uh, program to cooperate uh, in the Guangdong province because of our students, okay, because of the performance of the students, which uh, speaks very good English and knows, uh, knows how to deal with the market or deal with the case in an international way, and which is very close to their working style as well. So for example, the 4A agency, Ruder and Finn, uh, they only chose uh, public relations and advertising program at UIC as their cooperation uh, partner in Guangdong province, which means that if you would like an internship space, and the door is pretty open to you, okay? The opportunity is there and you can probably um, take an internship in during one of the summer uh, breaks uh, in your study uh, years. So then you can spend uh, two to three months in Guangzhou and doing an internship 
And so this is what our um, internship is looking like. And after graduation, of course, uh, 60 to 70% of our students go to further studies. They um, either go to uh, study media related programs or they go on to pursue advertising, global advertising or public relations or integrated uh, communication um, um, programs in, in New York University, in the University of Florida, in the University of uh, KCL, okay, uh, King's College London and uh, UCL, uh, University College London, these kind of very top universities uh, worldwide. So um, this is basically what are they uh, doing after graduation. Of, of course, some of them chose to start their own business as well. And the college has very good support for these kind of practices as well. So we have an internship and also an entrepreneurship uh, basis or startup basis in located in um, just three kilometers uh, out of the campus in, in, in Tangjia. And we have a, a startup base. So, and some of the students chose to uh, start a company there and with some guidance from the professors and support from the university and they get very um, uh, good uh, support, both financial, financially and also in terms of practice and operation of the businesses. And they are also doing very well. So, and of course, you, you may even uh, choose to work um, around, okay? As I said, you, it's close to, to Hong Kong and it's close to Macau. And now Macau and Zhuhai has a very close relationship. Um, you can choose to work in Hengqing, which is a place of, uh, that many Macau young, Macau uh, uh, youngsters, they will, if they would like to work in the mainland, they can choose to work in Hengqing. And then you have a lot of opportunities there as well. And the public relations and advertising program also have collaborations with some of the Macau uh, enterprises in Hengqing, which means that um, you may also um, have a chance to work with uh, the Macau companies in Zhuhai. So um, basically this is it. And also our students are coming all over from, from China and also from the world we have. Uh, two Korean students um, at the moment. So, and also uh, we have a Malaysian student uh, coming in, uh, maybe pretty soon, okay, as long as uh, there's no issue with the visa. So uh, the, the, the international environment is also here. And so, so I think, yeah, that's pretty much it. And if you have any questions, you are, uh, feel free to ask me, okay? Thank you. So that's, um, I don't know how, how, how long uh, can I speak? Can I, can I talk? So um, I'll just stop here and uh, I'll take any questions. Thank you, Dr. Xu. And now uh, we would like to welcome Professor Hong to give us some introduction uh, of a program of uh, a Chinese culture and global communication. Yes, yeah, can I can I skip share screen? Okay, okay, okay. I'll, I'll share screen. Okay, give me a second. Okay. Uh, can you see that? Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, good, good. Uh, let me go back. All right, okay. Um, hello everyone. Um I'm the uh, program leader of the uh, Chinese culture and global communication. I put it down in the, uh, in the, in the bottom, uh, a program for our global age. Uh, is that the, this program, uh, CCGC, uh, Chinese culture and global communication is a new one. It's brand new. So, uh, in fact, we are uh, on Monday, tomorrow, we are going to see the first group of majors of this program. So there's a young and robust program in the sense of uh, looking forward to the global age especially an age in which uh, clearly China will play an active role in, on the global scale. So in that way, uh, this is a program for global China. For anyone who would like to participate or actively involved in this kind of globalized society, which China would be an important player. And there are a couple of important points about this program, uh, three particularly important items. One is connectivity. In other words, uh, the, uh, the students who come, who come to this program 
uh, either you're from mainland China or you're from overseas, you are not, um, you're not expect to know all about China. You expect to know how China is connected to the, to the world and it is key point, connectivity. In other words, uh, we see even Chinese history, Chinese culture, language, and all this is part of a global uh, human growth. So connectivity, thinking is the most important uh, issue in this program. Another issue is in other ideas, creativity, in all this kind of cultural translation, cultural mediation, cultural communication, and communication is important in this sense of having different people to understand each other and thereby forming a humanity. And that is a key point of this creative understanding and creative communication. And then finally is dynamic. In other words, it's not just about one person. It's not it's about one country or, or a one, one power dominate the world. It's how to share the global resources among people from different parts of the world and thereby creating a better future. So in a way, the whole program based on communication, mainly, uh, namely connection, creative understanding, and, un and finally mutual understanding is part of what I see and hopefully the whole UIC uh, 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 college is about is to help you to start where you are and to go wherever you may be around the world. So this is, in other words, this is the, the concept of this, we see the world as connected, even though we put it in, uh, in the program, we localize it in China in terms of cultural system, lang uh, language system, and then a historical memory. But yet we're using it as a platform to see the connections and connectivity around the world. So we have two major issues here in the program, linking uh, culture and then communication. And communication here is, it, it means two things, not only about translation, and usually it's uh, 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 understood as just like a translation study or making a movie or doing a, a video, that kind of thing. That's important, the communicative network and communicating, uh, communicative technologies are important. But we also talk about communicate, communicative theory. In other words, how people meet and what kind of theoretical framework and perspective we can use in understanding and promoting mutual understanding. And global or globality is important. And I think more of, uh, most of you are, from, uh, 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 more, uh, all of you are, are from, from outside of China. And it's even more important because of the sense that uh, you, we, you're coming into China as, uh, um, uh, as, as foreigner, but that but you also have to immerse in this context. And that experience is part of this global communication. So it, it, by coming to, to UIC itself, okay, for all of you, is already a, go, a global communication. And you can use that experience, this existential experience to immerse in the study from another, another angle, how that your China experience could be a, launch, a launching pad for you, for you to be to, to reaching out to the globe. Uh, connecting the dots, in, the, in a sense, we are doing two things. Uh, for those who are in China, the, the mainland student, we are emphasizing they have to understand China not only from the perspective of China, they have to understand China from the perspective of the globe. For you is that you're understanding the globe first, but then you have to situate China back into the globe. So you have this kind of a mutual understanding in that way. And finally, what we want to achieve is how people connect. Uh, I hope in my imagination, I, I still haven't seen my student yet, is a, is a classroom where people can talk with, um, of, from different backgrounds about the China role in the world. In other words, it's not about China per se. It's not about the world either. It's about the China's role in the world and how China become a platform for this global communication. So the, the, the program itself is interdisciplinary. In other words, it, it starts with Sinology, the study of China. Uh, in a way, some of the uh, uh, American university and, uh, and also European university, they have the Sinology. Uh, we are doing the same thing, Sinology, meaning study of China from the global perspective. They're not studying China from a Sinocentric perspective. But nonetheless, the, the fundamental difference between studying Sinology in Zhuhai Okay, vis-a-vis -vis studying Sinology in the United States or Canada or Germany and France is that Sinology study of China is central. In other words, it's a mainstream. Uh, the Sinology in US, even in Harvard, is a, is a marginalized discipline. It's about a other, a ulterior, a alien culture. But here you live in Zhuhai. 
And also, better yet, uh, Zhuhai is a part of the whole Guangdong uh, area. Then you have Macau, Hong Kong, and better yet, Guangzhou, Canton. They have for centuries been a part of global communication and, uh, and trade and traffic. Guangzhou particularly, it all go, go all the way back to the south at least, you know, the town, uh, in the link to, uh, 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 to the Middle East, to South China Sea, and so on and so forth. So this milieu, these attitudes of, um, of, of connectivity will be the, 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 the trademark of the sinological study in this, in this program. But then another one is the communication, the com communication theory, communication study, uh, we have uh, courses about media. So in other words, media is important. Media meaning the, uh, the vehicle by which we mediate different cultural systems. That kind of media study will be important to understand that we're not just about, uh, talk about translation or study of China, but also how to present China, how to make China, uh, the image visible, spectacular, uh, spectacular, attractive and appealing to people around the world. And also by the same token with that, we earn friends and friendship and even collaboration uh, on that basis. And then another one is a comparative cultural study. So this is somewhat like the, uh, the cultural study in the uh, United States and in, in Canada, but it's much more kind of a focus on how China played a role in this kind of comparison. So you need to know something about China first, uh, and then using that as an example to understand how that ch Chinese culture is actually part and parcel of the, uh, of the global culture. For instance, Part of the Chinese culture is Buddhism. It's a Buddhist, uh, and in, in a way, uh, some sinologists call it concrete of uh, Buddhism in China during the Tang period. So the Buddhism itself in China, the Chinese Buddhism is not Chinese only. It's also part of the Indian and Central Asian um, influence. And then of course, another, uh, is the one of the, one of another famous uh, cultural comparative study would be the, the uh, Christ Christian, Catholic dialogue and a Christian Protestant dialogue in the 17th and the 19th century. Ultimately, it's about global, globality, the network of connectivity across the globe. So it is about global study. It involves international relations. It, it involves also a, a, um, uh, the, the study of migration around the world. And also like food, how food turned into a mechanism for uh, uh, intercultural uh, uh, mixing. So in other words, this is a fundamentally a uh, interdisciplinary approach encompassing, I would say all the major approaches um, and specialty in the social science, uh, anything go, anthropology, sociology, you name it, language studies, travel theory, and on and on uh, is included in this uh, study. So long as you're talking about China's link and connection with the globe. So in other words, this is basically a fusion horizon, other self in the world, you know self. Uh, for you, it's the self meaning um, coming from afar to China. The others is the, the, the situation that you to face in China and the, and the Chinese culture and Chinese um, uh, language or Chinese linguistic that you're going to learn. But ultimately, the goal is the connections between you and other. For the mainland student here, the Chinese students, the other way around is themselves open up. Don't, don't, let, don't see the world just from the Chinese perspective, to see the world from the other perspective. So in that way, this is a this fusion horizon, okay, is important of the, 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 uh, of the foundation of this um, uh, program. The curriculum have two parts. One is the required course, uh, about 147 units, okay, uh, of the whole program but of the 48 uh, units is from the required courses. And then you have the elective courses and you have the general courses from the, from the university and so on and so forth. But you, you also have free elective. So in other words, one of the important parts is that you have to be as part of the, um, the uh, humanity program of UIC, you need to grow and to be globally connected and locally rooted, you need to have that kind of reach out attitude. Uh, start, some, start here and go anywhere, okay? For the required courses, basically provide you the foundation, uh, like the, from, uh, the general history of China and culture. Remember, we are not, uh, all the courses are taught in English. And number two, you're not expect to know anything about China when you go into this program or anything about Chinese culture. Okay, even you don't know how to use chopstick, that doesn't matter. 
we, we will change you to know it because they start from the beginning. We assume everybody, including students from China, know nothing about China in the sense that even you know you have a Chinese history for years, you have to learn it from, a, from, from the beginning because you have to turn the, um, the perspective upside down. For domestic students, they have to unlearn China being the center. For you, it's that you have to bring you into the China. So in that way, you, you are on the same, same level. You have this equal uh, playing field with the students from, from China. The key point is that you have the foundation. So we have a, we build up the required course based on a general understanding of Chinese culture from a global perspective, general understanding of Chinese role in the, in the global system, uh, uh, understanding of Chinese uh, linguistic from a global system, uh, and then understanding Chinese poetry from a global system. Everything is global. And then the other one is elective. For elective course, we go to be, we want to be, be more specialized and give you some special, uh, at least more focused study on certain kind of topic that demonstrate or highlight the globality of China, of China or the global connection that China is uh, be, um, being influenced in creating it, uh, itself and, and also the Chinese uh, uh, collective identity. For example, uh, we have a Chinese classics and its global uh, circulation. That is to say, to study how, how the five classics uh, in the Confucian canon move around the world. Uh, we can we also can study about Laozi, for example, move around the world. We also have a, a specialized course on Guangdong culture, uh, where uh, the professor will lead you around the Guangdong area to see how Guangdong also is a migrant. Okay, it's a lot of mi uh, history of mi migration, which is actually and pick uh, 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 at, at encapsulate what we are seeing today. This global migration that we're seeing. So it is from a local perspective, we can project to the global. And then you also have the Sino-Japan relationship, Sino-European relationship, and so on and so forth. There's one uh, course you may be interested to kind of highlight the, uh, this, the special nature of this program is the how Shakespeare opera being translated and being transformed and recreated in movies, in TV, in songs, and so on and so forth. That, that encapsulate the, uh, what I, what I see as the, the uniqueness of this program, uh, locally rooted, but globally connected. Uh, this is this, uh, the uh, uh, faculty that we have. Uh, we have uh, one, uh, beside this, we are actually uh, have other, we have two, for example, uh, uh, this is myself, okay, this is a, uh, Chen Zhaning, uh, the specialist in linguistics. Uh, uh, Chen Zhi is, uh, uh, is a specialist of, this, uh, of the Book of Songs studies. The uh, Yegos uh, um is a Ukrainian. He's a Sinologist. He speaks Chinese as good as I am, even better than I am in, in, in his Beijing uh, uh, pronunciation. Uh, he actually is, uh, is a part. He's a, uh, he's a scholar of Asian Chinese, Chinese uh, um, text, and he's going to, to teach uh, in, a, in, a, in a program how to, uh, how to study, how to understand the, the, um, the, the Chinese prose from a comparative cultural and linguistic perspective. Uh, Andy, Andy, uh, Andy Fong is a specialist of a Shakespeare in China, okay? uh, and, and that way uh, make him very special for our program. And then uh, uh, James uh, James Yang is a specialist of the, the social culture of the of the Chinese of the Chinese society uh, the social changes in Chinese society from comparative perspective. Uh, this professor is on leave now, so we will not be able to see her until maybe two or three years later. I am a scholar of the global global travel, Yijing. So uh, Professor Chen and I. Together, we are already a good team of making out of five classics of China, two of them, we can show the globality and uh, the global connections. And that is the, the, what this program is about, is using China as a basis, a starting point to see the world as a intricately related and creatively transformed through multiple means of communication and also communicative uh, creativity, okay? And in the in a nutshell, and you can see on the uh, on the web page of the of this program, two words that encapsulate the essence, the characteristics of this program: locally rooted and globally connected. 
and uh, as I said before, it means two things to two to different students. For you, is that you are locally rooted in your own country, but you are globally connected here through the wind, through the lens of studying Chinese study, uh, China. For the for your classmate in China um, who come from. Uh, to, uh, from China, they will be local rooted, meaning they're China, Chinese, but they have to see the world from the perspective of the globe. And in that way, I hope that uh, we come in, uh, you will see this dialogue, not only in your class, in your text, in your assigned reading, in the syllabus, uh, in the lecture, but, is, but also in the uh, give and take in the classroom. And that's the beauty of that, because uh, your classmate is already your own uh, uh, means of transnational cultural communication. Okay, I will stop here and hope and this map actually uh, and uh, to me is important to show that whatever we who we are, who we are and where, are, where we are, we are connected, even though we don't know it. So in that way, this program tell you nothing new, but it, much, but it give you an existential feeling of this global connection that always elude us. If a cup of coffee in your hand, or if a croissant in your other hand, you already globally connected. But this this program is making you even more realize that because of the location of Zhuhai within the, uh, the Canton Delta, and more importantly, the atmosphere of the UIC being a school that helps you to start somewhere, but go anywhere across the globe, and that is hopefully you will join us uh, in the coming year. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Han, for uh, sharing the information for Bachelors in Chinese Culture and Global Communication program. So I think it's now time for a Q&A uh, session, Jessica. So students, if you have any questions, you can send on the Q&A section. So you can just write it there and then we, will, we can cover uh, some of your questions for today. And I do have some uh, questions. I think we can discuss with Professor Han and also Dr. Uh, Xi Xiaying as well. So in terms of, uh, especially in terms of the prospect of like the future prospect for the programs at UIC, for example, uh, for the Bachelors in Chinese Culture and Global Communication program, what's like the future prospect for this program? And uh, how is it relevant for international students, especially because uh, a lot of the international students might come back to their home countries. So how the knowledge that they get from the UIC, from uh, Chinese culture and global communication program, from uh, public relations and advertising program will be relevant for their future after graduation. Uh, Richard, you want to start? Uh, I can follow you. Um, okay, so um, you're asking about uh, uh, graduate prospects uh, for international students, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, as I said, um, uh, actually it's uh, United, uh, the UIC in United International College is a very internationalized college and we use uh, international um, language and also uh, textbooks, reading materials. Um, so uh, it, it, it's really um, internationalized. And at the, on the other hand, we are very close to the Chinese market. So I think uh, the niche of our program is that you get very close uh, connection to the Chinese market and which is a huge market uh, in the world. And with these kind of specialties with some Chinese experience, I think um, that's a very uh, important uh, aspect for students when they go back to their home country or to go to uh, other places to work. And if they have some experience and knowledge and, and it's, first-hand knowledge about the Chinese market and Chinese consumers, I think that would be a very huge advantage for them. Yeah, I just continue that. I, I read, um, to follow up the uh, Dr. Dr. Shi's uh, discussion, uh, explanation, the, this prospect is actually huge. Uh, number, number one, okay, uh, even the whole uh, uh, job market in this area, the, uh, the Great Bay area is already enormous. Uh, you have uh, Hong Kong, Macau, Zhuhai, and then Shenzhen, and then uh, uh, Dongguan, Boshan. 
Guangzhou, yeah. and then you, you name it. It's 11, 11 different, different place cities in this area. And it, in, in a way, it's not one area. It's actually a, a series of cities located in one region. So that uh, job opportunity is huge. Uh, regarding to, uh, to ch uh, Chinese culture and global communications, that for you is that a, a knowledge of China will help you open door in your, at least getting employment in China. You know what, what to do in a Chinese situation, in a, in a, uh, 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 a cultural and a milieu or environment in which you have to understand the gesture about the language uh, uh, by, by, the, uh, by your boss or by your colleagues who are mainly in China, uh, grew, up, uh, grew up in China. So that's number one, but even you go, you go, abroad, go back to your home country, there's also another opportunity that international uh, corporations uh, like uh, transnational corporations, international banks, and global organization like UN. I mean, uh, you can go shoot, shoot the moon. Okay, uh, 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 you still have to deal with uh, this 1.4 <laughs> billion populations uh, in, in around the world, uh, and and also the uh, the gigantic uh, the uh, the structures of communication, not both uh, in terms of um, uh, the. Uh, the, 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 chance, the, the chances of people and also chances of goods and services. In a way, uh, it's hard to avoid uh, uh, doing business with, with Chinese in the 21st century. So you're on that note, um, this is very kind of a, the door is open for all of you in terms of career, uh, both from the, from the levels of uh, the transnational banking, for example, I, what I'm thinking, uh, HKB, um, uh, the uh, Hong Kong Bank and all these kind of uh, Huge bank, Bank of China in uh, in Africa, for example, that is a there's a, a, a huge opportunity, and that the starting point perhaps is to know where your major customers and major uh, pros, uh, prospective um, employer and even long term uh, uh, business collaborator who what, what would they like? So in other words, this program doesn't give you a, a concrete uh, career. But it all they give you the attitude and a cultural uh, you can say system to unlock all this mystery when you are when you have when you have an opportunity to deal with a Chinese customers or a Chinese um, uh, 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 a, a partner, for example, in a business. So I would I would say I'm, I, I is have three level locally the two this uh, 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 this uh, Pearl River Delta, and then China market. And then the global market, and and the global market, all these free area will eventually link back to your local um, uh, market in your home country. The world is a globe; you're all interwoven, interconnected. Great, thank you, Professor Han and Dr. Yes, yes. Uh, Sushai. So I think another interesting thing is the internship opportunities uh, for bachelors in public relations at, and advertising. So uh, like how is the internship will be arranged for international students and how long will it be? Yes, um, like I mentioned before, we have quite uh, a lot of internship opportunities. Um, uh, students can choose to uh, intern at uh, um, public relations or advertising agencies in, in Guangzhou, in nearby cities in Shenzhen or in uh, Beijing and Shanghai. And all these agencies, they are open for application. And actually, uh, more than 70% of our students all have these kind of internship opportunities uh, to, uh, during these uh, summer breaks. Uh, it's mainly, uh, normally it lasts for three months. Okay, and we do have a three months uh, uh, summer break. So, um, so, so they go to these agencies and intern for three months. And that's option one. And option number two is something unique uh, in the PRA program is that we also have a PRA agency, which means we are um, we are already cooperating with some outside partners, uh, brands in the in the Hong Kong, Macau, and Guangdong Greater Bay area, and uh, we we just provide this kind of um, service to them and help them solve uh, communication problems in that they would like to solve. So uh, we have this P uh, public relations and advertising agency. So it's an in-house agency. And 
then it's project phase. So the, pro the, the project may last for three months or even longer, half a year, and that's all possible. All right, thank you so much for the uh, detailed info about the internship opportunities. So I think it will be like a pleasant uh, experience because I mean, that's something that I did myself during the bachelor studies. And I do feel there's a huge benefit doing internship, especially if you're doing it uh, overseas because you're not only just learning in universities, but you actually will have a chance to to implement what you studied in at classes, you know, to, you know, to share your ideas to the companies and all that. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think there are a few more questions uh, for the admissions team at UIC. So yeah, time is very limited. Maybe we can cover these two more questions. So the first one is, uh, is mainly about the border for international students. So is there any updates about the border for international students or uh, how's the arrangements going to be for September 2022 intake? I think this is like the very hot uh, question for international students because obviously everybody's excited to come back, but, you know, there's COVID-19. So how's the arrangements going to be uh, for UIC? Uh, thank you for this question. Actually, um, we are working very closely with our local government. So we... Um, uh, yeah, if there's any update information about when the students can come back and when they can apply for the GW22 form and the visa, we will inform the students immediately, immediately. So if they can now come back during the first semester, they will uh, be arranged to take online courses. And our uh, we have uh, the hardware of the facilities to provide the online uh, courses. And also our professors and the lecturers, they are familiar with the online um, of facilities like uh, we have camera sound system so it's very mature now so i think for online uh, classes is uh, no problem for our professors right so for now uh border is still closed but regardless everybody can still study you know there's internet and uh, everything the whole internet infrastructure is built so that everybody can be connected even if we're far away so yeah we are hoping for the best hopefully Border is going to open up very soon uh, and, you know, uh, and the situation in terms of COVID-19 is also getting better. I think there was like one uh, question about the application deadlines as well and also about the documents. So maybe if we can go over that quickly, Jessica, so that students can be reminded again on like when is the application deadline for UIC or like what's the documents they need to prepare because, you know, you hear all this information, but if you're late in application, there's no use, right? So they have to uh, be prepared and they have to really, uh, they have to really prepare for all the application materials so they can then submit it on time. Okay, I will uh, mention about our application deadline. Our um, uh, application deadline is June the 30th, June the 30th. So you will have uh, plenty of time to prepare for the documents. And the documents you need to provide is undergraduate certification of high school, transcripts, two recommendation letters, personal statement, passport copy, language certification if you are from non-English uh, speaking countries. So that's all the application materials you need to submit. So if you have any questions, you can remember our uh, contact information international at usc.edu.cn. So we will answer your question within 24 hours. <laughs> so yeah, I final one uh, for our Q&A session today. So guys, if you have any further questions, uh, you can contact uh, UIC team directly or you can contact John Admissions for more information. And so thank you so much for spending if, uh, the professors. Do you have any, any last uh, closing statements you want to share with international students before we officially close this session? Well, we'd love to see you all here. Yeah, me apply, too. And, apply, yeah, and, and welcome to explore. Yeah, yeah. yeah and it's welcome exciting to explore world. our website. Yeah. I can express my my, uh, my my gratitude to be here because of the the energy. So I, I think Richard I can tell the same thing too. This the energy, the uh, they make you happy because it's a it's a booming town. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and Zhuhai is very lovely. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're excited to see you high one day. So hopefully border is going to be open up soon. So students uh, have the chance to 
experience UIC in Zhuhai, not just online. Yeah, for sure. All right. So okay. thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you, Cody. Thank you, Professor Han. And th thank you, Dr. Uh, Dr. Xu. Thank you so much, uh, everybody who joined this event. So we hope this session today is fruitful for you and useful for your application to UIC for the September 2022. Remember, the application deadline is uh, is at June 30, although it's still far away, but application is already open. So if you're ready with all of your documents, you can submit it now. So yeah, thank you so much, everybody. Have a nice day. Have a nice weekend. Stay safe. Bye, everyone. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.